All right, and now welcome to a class that I'm teaching when I'm not even in the room. Get excited! It's all about Cornell note-taking. Oh, I know. Some people in here are like, yo, uh, Mr. Hain, we already know how to take Cornell notes. But I'll tell you the real reason I'm talking. The real reason I'm talking right now is that you can write down your essential question on the top of your page. Oh, yeah. I see the pencils moving. You might want to pause the video just to make sure that everybody has written down the essential question. Um, but yeah, make sure that essential question is written. If you don't know how to set up your Cornell Notes page, find someone in the classroom at your desk group that does know how to do that. And then we will get started. <clears throat> I'll be here when you get back. Go ahead and pause the video. When everyone has the essential question written, go ahead and press play again. And we're back. So there is a lot of discussion in the class about how uh, some teachers don't give Cornell notes. Ah! So take Cornell notes anyway. And that's what this lesson and this video are primarily about and for. Because this lesson and video are going to be uh, preparing you and showing you exactly what you can do and how you can take Cornell notes as a practice when, when teachers don't give uh, notes into Cornell or how to convert packets or a worksheet into Cornell Notes. And we'll talk about that a little bit more um, as we go along in the video today. But real, really, the question is, why Cornell Notes? See, Cornell Notes are a specific way, and some people do think that they're a waste of time. I'm not even going to lie. There are some teachers that you might have even heard that have said that Cornell Notes might be a waste of time. But let's get real, people. Cornell, no, no, Cornell Notes, when you do nothing at all with them, kind of are. They're no better than regular notes. So Cornell notes, when you use them properly, like we're going to today, help you organize what you see, hear, and experience. And it's the revision process, the process that we're going to participate in class today with another person specifically and on your own as well that help make Cornell notes so powerful, that help, help you see exactly why revise the notes and going back to what happened in class, that's the absolute most important part of the Cornell notes process. All right, so let's keep on moving forward. Yeah, uh, make sure that you have set up not just one, but maybe two or even three pages for Cornell notes. And in fact, I'm going to be uh, giving in the table of contents, I'm going to be giving three pages for this exercise today. So there are a lot of pages. This should be page uh, 9, 10, and 11 of your notebooks that has these in there. Um, and I just put this slide up to give you a reminder of what Cornell Notes should look like. Um, so if you are in the classroom, go ahead and pause the video. Uh, I will be back when you get back and after the students have set up three pages front uh, of Cornell Notes. So that's one page on the front side, that same page on the back side, and the next page. So pages 9, uh, 10, I'm sorry, 10, 11, and 12, or 9, 10, 11 of your notebooks set up for today's class. Go ahead and pause. I'll be here when you get back. And we're back and you have three pages of Cornell notes. So um, here's what's going to end up happening. I am going to actually tell you guys why I became a teacher. So uh, get prepared because it's going to be awesome. All right. Live from the TV. What? You can probably even hear me off my microphone. Okay, um, back to being serious. Okay, so um, why did I become a teacher? So I graduated high school in 1998, and I really, really, for some reason, I just wanted to get into computer programming. I thought it'd be awesome. Like, I could make, like, apps or games or just, like, you know, solve problems on the interwebs and get there. Um, so I went to the University of Maryland College Park. Go Terrapins! And I uh, had a great time there. It was, uh, I, my, I graduated in 2002 with my bachelor's degree in Decisions Information Systems, which is a really, co really uh, complex and fancy way to say computer programming and business administration. Uh, so a lot of the, the companies that were hiring, they went out of business So when I graduated. So it was kind of tough finding a job. And uh, I didn't want to like just become like an entry level position and not do a lot of things. And so it was difficult because I was competing against people that were in my class two or three years ahead of me and had all this experience. And so it was really difficult for me to find a job. So a lot of companies um, stopped, weren't hiring, uh, at least brand new people. And so in order to pay the bills and, you know, like pay the bills on my car and car insurance and all the rest and rent, 
uh, I kept working as a hospital security guard. Mm. So working at the hospital was something that I did as a security guard in college uh, because it was something that was a job that I could do and do my homework and concentrate and also, you know, have money to do things like, you know, go out to eat, eat dinner with my friends or watch a movie. Uh, so, but even though um, I was making decent money as a security guard, uh, I really didn't want to do that as a career. I mean, I went to college to program computers and um, like, I didn't want to just become a security guard for the rest of my life. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but that's not what I wanted to do as a career. So I started looking for other work and I started to get thinking about uh, what else I found challenging and rewarding. And while, what else really made me enjoy what I did. And so I'll come back in a second and we'll talk about that. So I'm going to rewind back to middle school, which is the next part of where the story starts. All right. So in middle school, um, I was actually, I joined a steel drum band um, that formed in my sixth grade because of a girl I know. Her name was Jenny. She's my first girlfriend. My wife even met her. Um, but we're still friends to this day. And the important part was I really really loved playing the steel drum and I found out randomly that I was pretty good at it and so when I graduated the, uh, middle school the director of my middle school band asked me to join his band like his actual steel drum band and I said why not and so we ended up uh, recording two albums uh, and we re toured all over the east coast all the way from like New York and Toronto um, all the way down to Florida, all the way uh, west to Indianapolis. It was a great time. Parts of Chicago. Um, great time in my life. I uh, loved doing it. Uh, quick story. Like, they would do this thing where um, at the audience, they would, like, shout out all the different places that people um, – uh, were from and so they'd be like here's Carrie Davila and he's from you know the beautiful island of St. Croix and then everybody in the audience that was from St. Croix would be like ah! and they'd be clapping their hands and everything and um you know they they go through and from the lo lovely you know country the island of Jamaica we have you know all of these other people and they'd say all their names and then you know the audience would go crazy because a lot of people because steel drums are from the Caribbean so a lot of the audience was Caribbean and my mom would come on these tours because you know like I was only in high school and then they get to me and they'd save me for the end and they'd be like yeah hey, from the peninsula of South Korea, it's Brian. And then my mom would be the only one clapping. There'd be one one person clapping, and she'd be like, <laughs> and then everybody would join in because it was kind of funny. But that's just a quick aside story. Um, but it was real a lot of fun, and I love playing. And I recorded, uh, like I said, two albums with the band, and that kind of brings us to the next segment of our story. See, and that segment of the story aptly, a actually happens right back in college at the University of Maryland. So if anything, just to be honest with you, college is really expensive. And, uh, you know, you want to do a ton of stuff as a college student and hang out with your friends and go out to eat and watch movies. And, I mean, just you know, the amount of food that you eat in college, guys, it's ridiculous. You think you eat a lot of food now. And then you want to go to, like, restaurants and hang out. And then if you want to have a relationship with a girl, super-duper expensive. So I decided that I, wanted, I need another job. So being a security guard in college wasn't just cutting it for me. I needed something else. So I actually got offered um, through uh, by – people who knew me in the steel drum, uh, playing in the steel drum band, to be a, become a private music teacher at the Otley School of Music. And so that's uh, where I become a, became a one-on-one -on -one instructor of people who wanted to learn the steel drum. And that's where this, this next part of the story happens. And it's like super cool. Like there, there, was, a, there was a kid and he must have been, I don't know, like nine or ten, like maybe fifth or sixth, nah, fourth or fifth grade. And his parents were both from uh, Trinidad, and that's Trinidad and Tobago, and that's where the steel drum was invented and first got started, like, was really, really big. And so they they took him to the school, and they were like, oh, this is going to be awesome. He's going to learn how to play. It's going to be, um, you know, all the reason the parents want their kids to play the steel drum. And he wanted really bad to learn how to play the theme to Star Wars, you know, ba ba da ba 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 da ba ba And I was like, he was super into playing it. So, of course, for the recital, the awards recital at the end of the um, the music term, it, he wanted to learn how to play it. So I taught him how to play it. And one of the other piano teachers was his accompanist, and she played the rest of the piano parts while he played the main melody, the, the, the part that we all know as Star Wars. And, and he... He killed it. It was amazing. It was him, a piano, a steel drum, and that was it. And it was awesome. And at the end of the whole thing, like, he stood up, and he took this 
big bow and he like bowed out to the audience and like you know here's this 10 year old nine year old kid and everyone's in the audience is going crazy i'm clapping i'm super proud didn't make any mistakes hit all of his notes and i looked back because i knew where his parents were sitting and his his mom was back there and her i mean the tears like she was just like <laughs> And like she was not even speaking English or any other language except for a crying happy mom. And the dad, I just I'll never forgive this. The dad just looked at me and he kind of just went mm. like you know, it gave me like, you know, one of those like bro moments where he was just super proud, didn't want to say anything. I could tell that he was on the verge of tears. And that was maybe one of the most like it just felt right. Like I I, I definitely loved teaching and that moment with that with the parents and I thought that was like looking looking back having graduated college and um like it, working as a security guard not being able to find a job computer programming this was something that was like really meaningful to me and was like awesome and I was trying to think about moments in my life that were challenging and rewarding and that that moment was like wow like I should try to find something to do with this and when I thought this is something I should do, I actually began to look into becoming a substitute teacher because I thought maybe teaching would, would be something that I enjoy doing. And so uh, I remember going to orientation for substitute teaching. And I'll never forget the lady that, um, that did the orientation was like a former kindergarten teacher. And she was like, okay, now you're a part of the best job ever. And we were just like, oh, man, this, those of us are at the orientation were just like, wow, this lady kind of cray. But yeah, that was that was uh, my experience with with the orientation. But substitute teaching was awesome, and the the first job that I took was a substitute PE teacher, and I loved it. And I did it for three days, um, and then the school was like, "Hey, can you come back and can you become our substitute computer teacher?" My arm is all up in the camera, and so I was like, "Yeah, I'll definitely come back and do that." So I did that um, for a couple of months, and I loved teaching computers and I was like oh man this is what I'm gonna do like my, my, my major in college was about computers and everything else uh, but it, it was kind of weird and no offense to computer teachers I just thought that you know doing PowerPoint presentations all day was kind of like meh teaching students how to do it I was like meh I don't know if I want to do this um, so, but at the end of the, the, the term, uh, right before we got back from Christmas break, the same school asked me like, Hey, um, would you like to take over a seventh grade math class? And I was like, sure. And the lady had just had her, had twins. And so she didn't know how long she was going to be out and it was going to be for a while. And so she was like, oh, oh yeah, definitely. I'll, I'll, I'll teach a substitute math class. So I was like, all right, cool. So I took over a seventh grade math class and I Loved it. I, I I did not necessarily enjoy math when I was in school, but I loved teaching it and trying to make it fun and the challenge that came with that. And it was awesome. And by the end of February, um, the second month that I was teaching in her classroom, because I was going to be on there until the end of the school year because of um, surgery that happened with her baby uh, being born. They're fine. Like, that's all ancient history. But um, they were like, you know, can you uh, stay? And I was like, sure. But by February, I knew that I, this is what I wanted to do. I had found what I wanted to be as a career. It was going to become a teacher. And I'm like, yo, this is it. So I was applying to grad school and everything else. And that takes us to the next part of our story. And that next part of uh, of our story was graduate school. And there were a thousand applicants at, to the graduate um, program for teaching at the University of Maryland. And I was one of 25 students selected for that program and man graduate school was intense those were the, the the hardest 18 months of my school career that i ever did um, a typical day i got up at five o'clock in the morning so i could get to school by by 6 30. i'd grade set up lessons make copies you know do the board do all those things that you guys don't see as a, a, us teachers do until about six um like about 7 30 7 45 in the morning and then of course the students would come in and then i would teach all day all the classes and then um, after the classes were over with, I would go I would go straight to school. So I would go to, to my classes from about 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. every day. And then after that, after I got out of my classes at 9 p.m., I'd get home about 9.30, 10, 9.45, and I would do my homework, reading, writing papers, doing all kinds of stuff until about midnight. And so I did that for... A long time for this for a lot part of the school year, and it was a lot of hard work um, just to to stay on top of everything. But uh, I made it. Like I mean, I'm here. I got my degree, and uh, I made it. 
And so I was like super duper happy. And so that was really like what brought us to the last part of my story. See, and that last part of the story is the part that you guys know the best. It was Mr. Hain, comma, teacher. I had actually made it. And believe it or not, teaching is like the best thing that ever happened to me. It is the most fulfilling career choice that I think I could have ever made. It, it matches my personality. It matches who I am. Um, I love hanging out with cool people all day long. That's that's you guys. That's you guys out there in the seats. Um, and I love just like making a difference and like having students come back to guys come back to me like after you gra after you're promoted to high school and and visiting me and telling them what's telling me what's going on um it's seeing those aha moments like oh that's that's why I'm supposed to do that those moments are what I live for and what a student finally understands what's being taught um that's like totally awesome to me and then just getting to hang out with you guys like all day honestly that's exactly what teaching is about so that brings us um, to the end of just why I became a teacher and then to the next part of what we're doing, which is how to revise your Cornell notes. And so we'll get there, how to revise your Cornell notes. All right, so let's uh, talk about revising our notes. So what I want you guys to do is actually take some time and complete your notes. Uh, I'm going to have the person that's playing the video go ahead and pause the video. Now that you've watched the video, you're not going to watch it again. And what I want you to do on this pause is to go back through your notes and complete sentences that you might not have had the time to complete, um, and, but do it in a different color. So take a moment, get out a different color pen. Don't worry, I'm going to pause for about 10 seconds. While you're at it, get a highlighter too. And what I want you to do is complete the sentences that you didn't have time to complete um, uh, while you were watching the video in a different color, uh, colored pencil or colored pen, and then highlight uh, any ideas that you think are important. So the next several minutes of class, like I think a good like five to 10 minutes should be spent in silence. You need to give people time to remember. So guys, you got to be respectful and be silent so that people can remember um, what they heard in the video as they're going back through the notes. They're going to be remembering what I talked about and really just revise those notes uh, in a different color and highlight the important ideas. And then as you go, go ahead and add why those ideas are important in the different colored pen on the side of the notes. So you're just kind of like, if these were the notes, I would I would like highlight something and I'd say, okay, over here, these were important because I, you know, this is why Cornell notes work or something like that. So go ahead and pause the video for a good chunk of time. And I want the students in the classroom to complete their notes. When the students look like they're mostly complete, then we'll move on. All right, we're back. Now here's what I want you to do. I want you to find a partner not at your table. Um, so take a moment after I give instructions to do that. So hold on, get in your seats. Um, right now, you're going to find a person not at your table. You're going to go once through each other's notes. And uh, I want you guys to like compare your notes to each other, add things like say, hey, I remember in this part of the story, he said this. Oh, I remember at this part, he mentioned this thing. So make your notes as complete as possible. Compare and add. All right, so go ahead and do that. Pause um, the video a good five to 10 minutes to go ahead and do that, maybe even 15, as long as the students are being uh, productive in this time, this is what needs to happen. Compare and add with each other what those notes should be. Go ahead and pause the video. I'll be back when you guys are done. All right, so if you've restarted the video, now you should go back to your own table. Go back, go back, go back. And go once more through the notes and circle what you think are the three most important ideas in your notes. So go back through and circle the three most important ideas. And then um, to the left of where you took the notes, like over here, you're just going to add questions. Um, and add questions that you think are that those important ideas answer. So uh, take some time to add those questions. And then finally, finally at the end, write a summary about uh, that answers the essential question and share what you have learned about Cornell notes and the Cornell note taking process in that summary. So answer the essential question and add what you've learned about Cornell notes. Go ahead and pause the video um, for, for a good like five minutes as students are, re are writing their summary. Uh, once they're done with their summaries, uh, either the class should not be over, but I do have something else that I promise you guys I'd give you time to do today on Monday. 
And we're back. So you guys remember this? I think it was on page eight or nine of your notebooks. It's uh, the what do I need to improve? So you guys have your binder check grade sheets with tutor comments from Friday of last week uh, on the 18th of August. Go ahead and make this table. Um, and you want to talk about uh, what you didn't score well on in your notes, and then you want to give steps that you can do to make it better. So uh, I did not have two notes, Cornell notes for a class. What you can what you can do to make it better is take two Cornell notes for your class. And after this exercise, you should absolutely know what to do. So go ahead and complete this table in your notebook. Um, make sure that it is there. I am going to be looking for it when I when we grade your notebooks uh, on this Friday. There will be another notebook binder check and learning log. So go ahead and grab those learning logs at the end of class before you leave. Um, so complete that table, reflecting on how you'll make sure how this week's binder and notebook checks will be a lot better than last week's. So I'm going to stop talking because this video is done, but you guys have work to do. You can pause the video on this screen uh, if you want to just leave the table up. But really, guys, get back to learning. I will see you guys when I get back, and every single one of you guys are awesome because you are worth it. So keep moving forward.